This is a new 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro. And this is a new Surface Laptop Studio. These are the two best laptops I have ever used and today they're going head to head in our Smackdown. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and I don't often get excited about laptops. Tablets, yes. Foldable phones, yes. Laptops? Not so much. To me, laptops don't represent fun, they represent work. But two of my favorite devices that have come out this fall are both laptops. The new M1 MacBook Pros and the new Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. If you're in the market for a new laptop and you have money to burn, both of these are fantastic options. All right, so this is how SmackDowns work around here. I come up with a handful of categories. There is a winner for each category. I'm not allowed to have a tie for any particular category. And in the end, we tally up all the votes and we decide who the winner is. Even I'm sometimes surprised by the results. Let's take a look at the first category, which is the thing I talk about the most on this channel, which is art. These are very different laptops. This new M1 MacBook Pro is just like every other MacBook Pro. It doesn't have a touch screen. You can't draw on it, it's not pen enabled. So if you wanna use it for art, you're gonna to have to use some kind of external display, whether you're using something like a Wacom or whether you're using some third party solution or Apple's own sidecar in conjunction with an iPad to turn that into your drawing tablet. And that is a huge difference between the Surface Laptop Studio and that MacBook. Because the most recognizable thing that differentiates the laptop studio from pretty much every other laptop out there is that foldable screen. One minute, it looks like a laptop. The next minute, you're folding that screen down to different orientations, including one that looks like a bulky version of a tablet computer. Also with the Surface Laptop Studio, you have the ability to use that Surface Slim Pen 2. Now, if you've seen any of my reviews for the Surface products that have rolled out this fall that take advantage of that new pen, you know how much I like using it. It's not a perfect pen, but boy, it is really good. Many of the problems with the original pen, like wobble and jitter with the line and just general inconsistency and not fun to drawiness is now gone with this new pen. Also, when we're looking at price, that Surface Studio laptop does start at a lower price point. Of course, you do have to add the price of the pen to it, but with any MacBook Pro, of course, you're gonna have to have that drawing tablet on the side. Most of those are not portable. They need to be plugged into the wall. They need to be plugged into your computer. It's a lot harder to take those kind of things with you. Whereas the Surface Laptop Studio is an all-in-one that you can take anywhere, run on the battery, draw as you go. And if that's something that you need, then it makes it a lot easier to look at the Surface compared to the MacBook. So for this art category, we're going to give this one to the Surface Studio Laptop. Before we get to the next category, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. If you felt lately like there's something interfering with your happiness or getting in the way of you accomplishing your goals, you're not alone. It's been a rough couple years. That's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is a platform that will assess your needs and then match you with your own professional licensed therapist. This is not a crisis line. This is not self-help. This is professional therapy done securely online. And there are a broad range of experts in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network. And many of these therapists with these expertise might not be available locally in your area, but here they are online worldwide. You can log in anytime and send a message to your therapist. You can get thoughtful, timely responses and schedule weekly video or phone sessions. And if you ever feel like you and your therapist just aren't clicking, no problem. You can switch to another therapist free of charge. It's more affordable than traditional therapy and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash Brad Colbo. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And I have a special offer for my audience. That's you. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp if you go to betterhelp.com slash Brad Colbo. For this category, we've got to talk about the hardware. Now, there are a lot of channels here on the YouTubes that are benchmarking the living daylights out of this new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks. I am not one of those channels. What I know is it's fast and it works really well. In fact, both of these laptops in their base configurations are going to be plenty to run any of the art apps that I need to use. In fact, both of these and their base configurations can also run 
Premiere Pro and many of the video apps that I want to use. Although I will put a quick asterisk by the M1 MacBook Pro, even though many people are getting these huge performance increases when we're talking about video and processing and that sort of thing, and I have found video processing to be very good so far, there are some quirks, and that's more on Premiere Pro than it is on the MacBook itself. I found that when using certain video clips, specifically video clips that I have filmed using an iPhone, it can be kind of laggy. I'll hit the space bar to continue uh, the, the progression of the video and to play it, and it'll take a second or two or a beat or two too long to start playing that video, and that hugely breaks up my workflow. To me, this is looking like a codec problem, like certain videos have more problems than other videos, and I'm still trying to get to the bottom of it. Either way, these are things that never happened on an Intel Mac and aren't happening on the Surface Laptop Studio. I mentioned the M1 a minute ago. That is one of the key differentiators between these two laptops is that the Surface Studio is using the x86 architecture that most Windows laptops have used for decades, whereas Apple is spinning its own silicon now, and this is the first big bulky redesign of the MacBook Pros that uses some of those higher end chips, specifically the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. The biggest benefit for me of moving to the M1 is heat and sound. One, my old MacBook Pro got super crazy hot. Not anymore, that M1 Mac is really, really cool. In fact, in the mornings when I set it on my lap, it is freezing cold, and I kind of wish it was a little warmer. What's happening is the chip doesn't need to draw as much power. Now this has another benefit, which is battery life and this is a huge deal, I can get that M1 Pro chip laptop to last me almost the entire day. Many laptops, many, many laptops have been saying, hey, we could get 21 hours out of this laptop, and then I test it out, and I literally get three, maybe four, depending on what I'm doing that day. I legit almost get a full day out of this M1 Pro MacBook. Surface Studio laptop doesn't claim to have crazy battery life, but it it does solid. I'd say I'd probably get in two and a half, three hours out of it, like doing Photoshop, video editing, and that sort of thing, which is about what I was getting out of my Intel Max. It's it's right where I expected it to be. Battery life is not its strong suit. It's not really what Intel is good at. I think the screens on both of these are very, very good. One of the things that really helps out with that is both of those are running at 120 hertz. The MacBook Pro has a variable refresh rate, so what it's doing is it's changing the refresh rate depending on what you're doing to, to match the content on the screen. Eventually, the Surface Laptop Studio is going to have that in a future update. Right now, you could just toggle between 120 hertz and uh, 60 hertz. The M1 MacBook Pro is also rocking Apple's new Liquid Retina XDR displays, which is going to give you HDR content. It's going to give you black or blacks, white or whites, a better contrast ratio. When it's sitting Sitting next to the Surface Laptop Studio, I could definitely tell, hey, this screen is better. But I've kind of hit the point with screens where they're so good that I have to really be looking for it in order to see it. So if you're really worried about that, you're still going to get great colors on the Surface Laptop. But I can say if you're a color snob, you're going to notice that the MacBook is much better. Okay, the winner for this category? This one's going to the MacBook. Okay, for this next category, we're gonna be talking about design. You've probably heard people talk about these new MacBooks as being a step backwards, but in a good way. Four or five years ago, with the last iteration of the MacBook, they got rid of the keys along the top, replaced it with the touch bar, they got rid of all the ports and just replaced them with USB-C ports. There was that whole keyboard fiasco because they wanted to make the keyboard a little smaller. I mean, they looked cool, but not really the pro machine a lot of us were really looking for. The Surface Studio laptop is replacing the Surface Book, which was a hybrid between a tablet and a laptop. And basically, the top end screen portion of the laptop was a tablet that detached from the keyboard base. A keyboard base on higher end laptops housed a discrete GPU, which made that device even faster. But there, there were some drawbacks to it. One, it was incredibly pricey for the amount of power that it was packing, and two, because it was so small, the thermals were kind of meh, so you didn't hit overdrive quite as much. Thermals were also a huge problem in the older MacBook Pros. In fact, my 16-inch from just two years ago, the fans were pretty much on all the time. And that was one of my biggest beefs about the laptop in general. In the MacBook, there's much better ventilation than there used to be, but what's really helping it out now is that lower powered M1 chip. In my week and a half with this product, the only time the fan ever turns on is when I'm processing a video. That's it. That's the only time I've ever heard it. The Surface Studio, on the other hand, does run considerably hotter. However, the fans are pretty much silent. If it goes into overdrive and it really has to vent it out, you will hear the fans, but oftentimes the fans are blown 
blowing most of the time and you never actually hear it. But if you rest your hands along the sides, you can feel the hot air coming out. Now, obviously we talked about before the screen and how the hinge pulls down and lets you draw at different angles. That is a really cool design feature and it's really, really elegantly pulled off here. Acer did something similar with their laptops and when I went to pull out some of the B-roll, the stick of this video, I was like, wow, that is so chunky. And something that you could say about both of these laptops is they're slim and they're elegant and they look good. Now, a lot of people have pointed out that bottom notch on the bottom of the laptop studio. This is a thick laptop that is trying to disguise itself as a thin laptop. And when you're using it, it works perfectly. You can't see that bottom lip. The only time you really notice it is when you're carrying it around or when you pick it up. Even when you approach it and it's sitting on the table, you can't really see that bottom bump at all. Just looks like the laptop is hovering over the table a little bit. The MacBook Pro is a little bit more squared off, so it has kind of an older vibe. It's only a little bit thicker than the older 16 inch MacBook Pro, but because it's more squared off, it looks a lot bulkier and it is a really bulky laptop. This 16 inch version is about five pounds. I have design as a category because I'm a designer and this is important to me. Like I said, I really like those slim, elegant looking devices. And so I totally understand when a designer looks at a product and says, ooh, I don't like that little design element that can make or break a product because you have to look at that every single day. If I look at an interface and the rounded corners of that interface don't match up the way they should, it drives me nuts. So many Android phones do this. They just don't pay attention to that at all. So I get it when people look at something like that and say, yuck, I just can't deal. And of course, the M1 MacBook Pro has its own version of that with this notch. This controversial love it or hate it notch. I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't love it, but using this, it hasn't really gotten in the way. It doesn't fall into that category of I hate it so much that I can't possibly use this product. Also, I've seen in some people's experience that they have issues where the menu actually goes underneath that notch and comes out the other side. Personally, none of the programs that I use have run into that problem. It also could be that I'm using the 16 inch version, not the 14 inch version. So I have a little bit more real estate there to play with, but I'm also willing to accept it because it's housing the camera and it gives me so much smaller of a bezel on the top of the screen. On the Surface Laptop Studio, I'm willing to accept that bottom notch because it's letting it air out that computer, it's giving it better internals, and it's basically making it a more performant laptop. I only get mad at designs when it's there for aesthetics, like a hole punch camera on an Android tablet or something that doesn't really need to be there, they just thought it'd be cool. Or big honking camera bumps just because everybody else is doing big honking camera bumps. If there is a reason for it to be there, I'm far more accepting of it. And here, I feel like the notch and the bump are both there for a reason. So the winner of this category is a tie. Actually, I can't do a tie. That's against the rules. Okay, this category is going to the surface because it's doing just more new things. That screen is a risk. The design is a risk. The way the pen nestles down there is a risk. And I appreciate that, admire that, and like that. So this one's going to the Surface. All right, so we are ready to declare the overall winner and the Surface Studio Laptop 1-2 categories, MacBook 1-1 category. That's right, Surface Laptop Studio is our winner, which surprised me because for me personally, it's it's not. Like I said at the beginning of this video, both of these laptops are phenomenal. And when I got the laptop studio, I regretted getting the base model because I looked at it and thought, I could see myself switching from the Mac to use this full time. I've been using Macs for years and that's just the operating system that I work in most of the time. Although you've probably seen on this channel over the last couple weeks, I've been looking for excuses to use the Surface Laptop Studio more and more in videos because it's just so cool. The reason I got the MacBook is because heat and the fans and battery life are important to me and that had them all. Plus the addition of the port, specifically the little port for the SD cards is huge for me. But what do you think? Are you a Surface Laptop Studio person, a MacBook person? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.